What is Jonathan Taylor's trade value? Plus potential trade destinations coming to you right here. There's no better way to get better at football than playing football. So if you want to... Taylor's going to finish it! I've always been confident in my abilities. I think, you know, I'm a guy that can go out there and I always believe in myself that I'm going to get open and, and make the play if they throw me the ball. The third. Ryan end zone shot for Pierce. He caught it! Oh, what a... Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Colts cast. We're here to talk about, well, I am here to talk about everything and anything Indianapolis Colts. I'm Eric Smith, your host of the Colts cast today. Jamal is living la vida loca right now. He's on vacation. Uh, so you have me today. Look, this episode is brought to you by Manscaped. Today, we're here with the sponsor for your bouncing bottle of joy. No, we're not talking about a baby. We're talking about your baby makers. That's right. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. But just like babies, your delicate little guys have sensitive skin and deserve products that are not only skin safe, but made with safe ingredients. That's where Manscaped Platinum Package comes in from Razors to Shower Care. This package goes above the gold standard for your body hair. So treat your beautiful boys to the world's finest toys at manscaped.com and use our code ColtsCast for 20% off plus free shipping. The Manscaped Platinum Package 4.0 is the one-stop shop for the man who deserves it all. They designed this package to allow you to fully align your entire hygiene routine with elite products. Inside the Platinum Package, you'll find the Lawnmower 4.0 Trimmer, Weed Whacker Ear and Nose Hair Trimmer, Ultra Premium Body Wash, Ultra Premium 2-in-1 Shampoo Conditioner, Ultra Premium Deodorant, Crop Preserver Anti-Chafing Ball Deodorant, and the Crop Reviver Ball Spray Toner, Anti-Chafing Boxers, and the Shed Travel Bag to hold your goods while traveling guys all essential items to your happiness get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code coltscast at manscaped.com that's 20 percent off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code coltscast use the platinum package because the gold standard is no longer enough all right Ah, sipping on a little bit you know gotta take a break doing all that talking all right don't kill me today in the comments, guys. I want to preface this entire episode by saying I want the Colts to do the right thing and retain their most dangerous weapon on offense. I know a lot of our fans are are saying, you know, just, just let them go. We don't need to pay them. Let's insert a running back. I'm on the other side of the fence, but I am looking at it from t- both viewpoints. I understand both sides. I understand both arguments. It's It's really a matter of preference. But look, you have the cap space to do it. Let's get it done. He's vital to Richardson's success. So, all right. Jonathan Taylor versus the Indianapolis Colts. Who ends up winning the battle? There's a lot of tension. There's a lot of tension. The Colts are playing with fire right now. Uh, what are they going to do with a guy who averaged five point yard, 5.1 yards per carry in the three seasons he's played? 5.1. That's really good. That's really good. He wants to be a top paid running back. Who doesn't? You know, if at that position, everyone thinks they're they're the best at the position. That's what, that's what they're supposed to be. Um, it doesn't seem like the Colts want to pay him at the moment. And barring some sort of surprise long term contract, I think trading Jonathan Taylor, Taylor is becoming more likely by the week. Don't you think? Jim Irsay said he's not available for trade, but no owner is going to come out and say, "Hey, yep, let, let's get, come on, call me up." Let's let's trade him. I I don't think any owner is going to do that. Of course, he's going to say no. So what would a Jonathan Taylor trade really look like? Well, let's dive into it. You know, before we do, ladies and gentlemen, go ahead and drop a like for us. It really helps this video get out to other Colts fans and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. You don't want to miss one of our Grand Slam episodes. But you look, it's all Jonathan Taylor today. Let's talk about it. We all know how the current running back market is. It's crumbling, no signs of returning, going back up, at least right now. It's been largely devalued. But Jonathan Taylor is a different beast. We have to agree with that. Like, he is a top running back. The stats show it. I mean, he, it's just different with him on the field. You know, our offense is better when he's on the field. I think there's going to be some teams that are very interested. I really do. Now, a few days ago, Stephen Holder reported that quote, the Colts, according to a source with direct knowledge of the conversations, would be seeking an early round draft pick. 
that might be tough given the current climate about the value of running backs, end quote. So if this is true, I would say the Colts probably want at least a second round pick out of Jonathan Taylor. And to be fair, that would actually be a fair return on investment for JT, don't you think? He was drafted in the second round in 2020. He's given us three years of play. That wouldn't be a bad trade, guys. I mean, it's like you drive a car for three years and you get the same um you get the same return on investment as you spent, you know, a second round pick. That's not horrible. Um, but you know, guys clamoring for for at least a first round pick and a second round pick. Let let's look at the history of running back trades. Christian McCaffrey, injury prone stud, but you know, ran the Panthers offense. He got traded for a second, third, fourth, and fifth round pick. Now, that package could have looked completely different if he was healthy. But then again, if he was healthy, he probably wouldn't be on the market to be trading. Seattle traded a fourth and a fifth round pick to Buffalo for Marshawn Lynch. And we know how that turned out. Marshawn Lynch was one of the, one of the best backs in the league during his prime. Jay Jai to the Eagles for a fourth round pick. Marshall Falk. Everyone should remember this, old-time Colts fans, to the Rams for a second and fifth round pick. Now imagine, imagine if Marshall Fogg, one of the best running backs of all time, Hall of Famer, MVP in 2000, six-time All-Pro would have been part of the Peyton Manning era. Just imagine that. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> Wouldn't that have been great? Yes, we had Joseph Adai, we had Edron James. And I'm not taking away anything that they did because they, they were great, especially Edge. Edge is considered the best Colts back ever. So it's just Falk, in my opinion, had, had a better career in the end. In the end, and Falk's receiving ability could have been a huge threat. A huge threat out the backfield with Peyton Manning throwing to him. Peyton Manning under center. Peyton Manning, one of the best quarterbacks of all time. That's the Peyton Manning I'm talking about. In the end, things worked out for both teams. Each got a Super Bowl within the next decade. So that's neither here nor there. I didn't bring up the Trent Richardson trade, but let's talk about it. Brown shipped Richardson to us for a first round pick. Everyone remembers that. Oh, Andrew Luck and Trent Richardson? Yeah, the Colts about to be a problem. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> Trent Richardson is exhibit A of why you should never give up a first round pick for a running back. I mean, that, that's not the entire argument, but we saw how that turned out. Uh, you know, <laughs> 3.1 yards per carry over two years. That is that is horrific. Do you know how bad that is? There was no running back last year that averaged less than 3.5 yards per carry who rushed at least 100 times. Let that sink in. So... <laughs> That 2014 first round pick could have been very useful to us. Building block, you know, when we had Andrew Luck. Could have been. Could have been. So now we got Jonathan Taylor request and trade. Is there value in shipping him out of Indianapolis if we aren't going to be able to keep him long term? If we don't want to keep him long term? What if he doesn't want to play for us anymore after a great 2023 season? So let's say he plays this year and does amazing doesn't want to even sign with the Colts. Now money talks, but let's just, you know, for hypothetical. You know, what if his injury woes continue and we don't trade him and then don't sign him to a long-term deal? He walks free to someone else for nothing. So let's envision a trade for the sake of argument. Let's assume teams are calling around for the 24-year-old talented running back, which, you know, reports say that they are. He's younger than Ezekiel Elliott and Dalvin Cook. You know, um, they're 28 and 27, respectively. Ian Rappaport reported that there are teams out there willing to give him a contract he desires. So let's talk about potential teams. Let's talk about it. Uh, so first on the list, the Dolphins. I think they'd be a good fit. There's a lot of good fits. Uh, I got a lot of teams to run through. Um. They're loading up for a Super Bowl run. They just added Jalen Ramsey, Bradley Chubb. They added Tyreek Hill a year ago. 
why not add Jonathan Taylor as the final Infinity Stone? If they believe he's the missing piece that will take them further in that tough, tough AFC East division, why not? Now, the only thing holding them back, they're a bit resource constrained. But maybe. But maybe. Because they were potential suitors for Dalvin Cook. Chicago Bears. Ton of cal- uh, ton of salary cap space. Ton. I think they have the most in the league. And Matt Eberflus. We all remember Matt Eberflus. He used to be our defensive coordinator. He knows what he's capable of. He just knows. A little one-two punch with Justin Fields and Jonathan Taylor. Shoot, we could so we could probably pick any quarterback or any Russian quarterback team, you know, like the Baltimore Ravens. You can insert them there too. But the Chicago Bears, uh, in particular, they 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 have the draft capital too. You saw what they got with uh from that Carolina Panthers blockbuster trade. So the Panthers could draft Bryce Young. Got a lot of picks, they got DJ Moore. So they have ammo, they have cap space. Boom. Perfect. They, they, they have a relationship with a coach. Matt Eberflus knows them. Um, one thing they are missing, they're, they're not contending this year. I don't think they are. Uh, some you know fanatic Bears fans will say otherwise, but I don't believe they're contending. They're still in that rebuilding stage to me. But you can still be, able, you can still be rebuilding and, and add a building block to the future with that lucrative cap space. You can. <laughs> I could see the Kansas City Chiefs. I really could. They just won a Super Bowl with Isaiah Pacheco. Yes, that is correct. So why invest in a running back when you got Patrick Mahomes? Well, Jonathan Taylor makes your offense even scarier. Like, I don't think um, Pacheco garners as much respect in the backfield as Jonathan Taylor does. You know, I think it's going to add another dimension to that offense. A potentially premier running game because you gotta you gotta cover Patrick Mahomes too. So boosting that offense with Mahomes in his prime, I think that makes sense. Now, can they get it done? Not sure. They're still trying to pay their you know defensive tackle, uh, Chris Jones, things like that. These are all hypotheticals, but they're they they're, they're suitors that make sense. Um, I'll go over I guess a few others like the New York Jets. You know, Dalvin Cook visited them last weekend. Potentially, yeah, Brees Hall is coming off that injury. New England Patriots, nobody wants to hear it. Hard to stomach, but it would help Mac Jones and that offense out. Uh, Los Angeles Rams, they haven't had a top running back since Todd Gurley. You know, the list of potential fits could go on and on. I could keep going. There's a lot of good fits. There's probably some that probably wouldn't fit. Like, you know, the Falcons just drafted John Robinson. They don't need another running back. But. There's a lot of teams that I think Jonathan Taylor would 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 go to and a team interested in the top running back would take. You know, Jonathan Taylor is an amazing player, our strongest weapon on the offense currently. But that's a double edged sword when you think about it. When it comes to running backs in the trading trading market, you know, we may not get his actual value in the trade. So, you know, based on that recent history, I think he could fetch Indianapolis at least a second round pick. And I might say at most, I don't think anyone gives up a first round pick. So let me switch that up. At most, a second round pick. Maybe a third round pick and, you know, you package another running back to replace them because our depth is looking a little thin. But it's like, you know, I, I don't see us getting a huge package for Taylor. When, when you look at the history of running back deals, I mean, the last one I can think of that got a first round pick was Trent Richardson. And we we all know how what went down with that. So I think a second round pick's possible, third round, fourth rounder, uh, more likely, uh, if a trade were to go down. Um, like he look, he may be worth a first round in a lot of you guys' eyes. I I think we could make an argument that he, he is worth, you know, a first round pick, but no team is going to give up a first and a large contract for a running back. I just, I don't see it. I really don't. Um, but it it's hard to see JT go uh, if something does go down. But in the end, I root, I root for the Indianapolis Colts. 
I think most of you guys do too. This isn't the NBA where we're like, you know, I'm team LeBron. I'm, I'm wherever LeBron goes. I think most of Colts nation is they, they will rock with the Colts till the end. It's a team sport. So if a trade were to go down in the next couple of weeks or whenever, I think we will survive, but it's going to take a hit on our offense. Again, I'm not rooting for a trade to happen, but I'm seeing it more likely. I, I wanted to discuss it with everybody because it's been on my mind. I can't sleep. I, I might wake up one day and he's traded to, <laughs> you know, the Miami Dolphins and the England Patriots. It, it, it could be just something crazy. And, you know, I, I can't sleep right now because I know there's bad blood. And I just wanted to talk about it, get it off my chest, of course. But let me know what, what you guys think. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think in the comments. Love to hear from everyone. I think we heard from a few people on the last episode. Um, some very interesting takes, I will say. But let's let's talk about it again. Let's discuss. That's going to be it for us, everyone. Thank you for listening to the Colts Cast. We're live on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, or any platform you use to listen to podcasts. We'll be back next time to give you some more Indianapolis Colts content. Y'all take care.